Howdy, this is David Gross, your Texas Tax and Lawman. We're in the middle of our estate planning series. Last time, we discussed the most popular estate planning tool, the Living Trust, which is a flexible and changeable agreement created during our life to manage our assets. Today, let's discuss an irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust can be created during life or death but it generally requires that the settlor and the trustee be different people. The goal of an irrevocable trust is to separate the legal title, the ownership of the property, like the name on the deed or the name on a car title, from the person who actually ultimately receives the assets in the trust. In most situations, a parent or grandparent wants to establish a trust for a child, a spouse, or a grandchild, and wants someone else they trust to manage the assets. This can be a trusted friend or a professional trustee. The job of the trustee is to protect the property and make it last for the beneficiary. Irrevocable trusts are often created in a will after someone dies. The decedent is the grantor, they name a trustee who manages the assets for the beneficiaries, usually the kids or grandkids, until they reach a certain age. In my practice, we regularly use irrevocable trusts to own life insurance policies. While life insurance is exempt for income tax purposes, if you own the life insurance policy on your life at the moment of your death, the IRS counts the full value of that life insurance policy in your taxable estate. For estates over the state tax exemption, which is now $11 million, that means the IRS could actually impose estate tax on life insurance dollars, and nobody wants that. When the estate tax exemption was only $600,000, that was a critically important issue. Alternatively, we use irrevocable trusts in estate planning situations where people are trying to give away or transfer assets out of their personal estate by gift or sale. Their goal is to establish a responsible person to manage those assets until a triggering event, like a death or the age of a beneficiary. Unlike a living trust, an irrevocable trust needs its own taxpayer identification number or TIN from the IRS. It also needs to file an annual Form 1041 tax return if it has more than $100 of income in a year. There are three big benefits of an irrevocable trust. First, the assets of the irrevocable trust are not included in the state of the settlor, the grantor, or the one giving the gift or selling the asset. Second, the trust, if it includes a spendthrift provision, which all of mine do, protect the assets from the creditors of the beneficiary and the grantor. This is a great tool to protect your gifts to your kids from their future potential spouses or creditors. Third, the trust can survive the grantor and hold, manage, and distribute the assets to the named beneficiaries over time. The most important thing in establishing an irrevocable trust is picking the right trustee. When we say the word trustee, Sometimes pictures of a terrifying tyrant of a trustee in a black suit pops into our heads, like this guy. Hopefully, the trustee we pick just wants to hang up his coat before rolling up his sleeves and taking care of our business. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, adios. Texas Tax and Lawman Legal Disclaimer. Hey, I'm a lawyer. You know I have to have some lawyer mumbo jumbo. This is a general information video not client attorney privilege information. The content is information only and is not directed to any specific facts or circumstances and cannot be relied upon as a legal opinion, even though that would be nice and save you a trip to the lawyer. If you have a specific legal question, feel free to contact David Gross directly or seek qualified legal or tax counsel in your state of residence, state of mind, or whatever place you call home.